was out in the middle of the Caribbean, and the Lord gave me a vision, a picture in my mind, a movie, and it was waves of young people going from everywhere to everywhere by the millions. As Christians, we're normally not terribly interested in history, but what we must uh, realize in reading the Bible is that God thinks it's important. I do understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Good evening, my fellow Americans. On July 20th, 1969, The young people come from all over the world and from many different backgrounds and denominations to meet together at this unique school in Switzerland. For many of the young people, the training began in a summer of service in Europe, Asia, Africa, or America. Clearly, God was uniquely preparing these young workers for the challenge of Munich as they witnessed on the streets, someplace, or any place in the world. The tiny village of Herlach was deluged by more than a thousand Jesus revolutionaries. By truth decay, read your Bible today, my friends the living solution. to God, that would have been 50,000 Christian young people that might say we're ragged and poor, that part doesn't matter, but we're changing the world for the cause of Christ. Beginning with their early morning wait for the train, the Y-Whammers day was continuously punctuated with prayer. The world watched in horror when their best attempt at brotherhood, the Olympic Village, where athletes from around the world were to live in peace and harmony, exploded into a battlefield. While the memorial service for the murdered Israelis was taking place, the Christian young people quietly prayed on the streets. They sang and they comforted the angry, confused public. At last, the police gave in and permitted the Christians to march. They marched in sympathy for the Israeli victims, distributing 10,000 flowers to the people to illustrate to Munich and to the world that only in Jesus' love was there a real basis for brotherhood. Those first young students spread out around the world. And from the first go base, exploded first three, then eight, 17, and 80 centers. Some 80 schools in 80 countries in a short 12 years. God was multiplying. More than 100,000 volunteers acted in obedience between 1970 and 1980, creating a caring army with arms stretched right around the globe. One thing about YWAM, in those few years before that, whatever you do, you pray about. I prayed about it, and that's when the Lord said, YWAM is going to have a university, and you're going to be a part of developing that.
picture of the ship that we purchased a few months ago. It's, it was called the Victoria. It's now called the Anastasis, which in Greek means resurrection. But from the word of the Lord about ships and universities, it came at the same time. The twins were born the same year. The campus here in Kona, and the first ship to be a fully developed ship in YWAM came in 1978. As well, just this liner, they renamed her the Anastasis. Well, it's a joy to be able to be with you. You know, I love this mission. I don't love it because I'm married to Mr. YWAM. I'd be a YWAMer without him. I just love this mission. So many times I've tried to tell you, but I don't think you've been listening. There's nothing I want to try and sell you, because his love is free. You're so proud of saying you're a seeker But why are you searching in the dark? You won't learn a thing until you soften your heart What about God? What does he think about the poor and the needy? How does he feel about their suffering? We serve a God who weeps, who's brokenhearted, a God who suffers with those who suffer. If you're a teenager or younger, you're part of a generation that is being viciously attacked. If just this once I could show you your empty life and we need to talk to muslims talk to jews and say we acknowledge that those attitudes and those actions were wrong that's why the reconciliation walk has been proposed that's why it's already underway college of communication Training Christian communicators for all nations. The University of the Nations is YWAM's global university dedicated to equipping students to serve worldwide in every sphere of life. The university is divided into seven educational areas, one of them being communications. Because we live in an age of information, Christians must have a wide base of knowledge and experience in many areas of communication in order to be a strong advocate for their beliefs. We need to tap into what God has as a plan so that we can have this wonderful tool that we can share in changing your nation for Christ. Yeah, this is cool. <laughs> I will preach the gospel of dying and be forgotten as long as you get the glory. And I will preach the gospel of dying and be forgotten as long as you get the glory. Yeah. I will preach the gospel of dying and be forgotten as long as you get the glory. hear the challenge of Christ. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. As long as there is still unreached millions, the labor is a few. God is still seeking for the willing youth that will present himself to be trained for service. It all begins as we hear his voice. We 
we come in all sizes and shapes. We come in every beautiful skin color that God ever made. We've been able to prove that nationalities and various generations can work together. In this diverse global mission, how can we best tell our stories to inspire more to go into all the world? Glimpse of heaven, 100 countries, people, 70 different spoken languages working together. We are the true United Nations. Monguri Kenya. Talahapi Gaunan. Onak Tomoka. Unifying. Pingtangi. Humido Simida. Unglaublich. Kalongapa. Maitabasa. Asanatla. With many tribes and tongues, but one united voice, we join together to tell honest stories of hope and unveil God's endless love. YWAM TV. This generation is full of people who love Jesus, but they're disconnected from the bigger picture, the larger story that God's telling, and they're hungry for more. I want to find a way to reframe missions as a larger story that's filled with adventure, filled with romance. This is an amazing story, and God is for us. So what is Discipleship Training School, or DTS? This experience is divided into two halves, lecture phase and outreach phase. In lecture phase, you'll spend your time living in a community setting focused on knowing God. DTS was the most insane time of my life. When I went to DTS, God just completely transformed my life. I just was ready to go all in. God did amazing things in my life. So whether that's worshiping together around a campfire in the mountains, exploring the city or a coffee shop together, we integrate that with lecture speakers that we fly in from all over the world. We believe it makes our relationship with each other and with God deeper. Every week was just slammed with something um, new and just completely wrecked for God. And Identity week was what most life-changing week. But I think the biggest thing that really stuck out was learning about forgiveness. During outreach, you will travel to a cross-cultural destination and make God known by sharing your faith, healing the sick, and serving the broken. Outreach was crazy. It teaches you to be so far out there that you can't do anything but depend on God. I went to Kenya and Uganda for my outreach. First place was Indonesia, and we went to Samoa. My outreach for DTS, we went to India. It makes you live out your faith. Small little pieces of love that don't seem very huge to yourself make a huge impact. Knowing that your job that day is to wake up just to love on people. And in that moment was like, 
wow, like I can be used by God. We are image bearers of the Most High God. We're made for that connection. This is the adventure that you've been looking for. I was out in the middle of the Caribbean, and the Lord gave me a vision, a picture in my mind, a movie, and it was waves of young people going from everywhere to everywhere by the millions. The harvest is ready. As Christians, we're normally not terribly interested in history, but what we must uh, realize in reading the Bible is that God thinks it's important. Go for landing, 3,000 feet. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Good evening, my fellow Americans. On July 20th, 1969, man went to the moon. Young people come from all over the world and from many different backgrounds and denominations to meet together at this unique school in Switzerland. For many of the young people, the training began in a summer of service in Europe, Asia, Africa, or America. Clearly, God was uniquely preparing these young workers for the challenge of Munich as they witnessed on the streets, someplace, or any place in the world. The tiny village of Herlach was deluged by more than a thousand Jesus revolutionaries. By truth decay, read your Bible today, my friends and living.
on that. <laughs> Good. Um, we're going to do some, what we always do with conferences, you know, yes, and yes. meeting each other and stuff like that. We're going to actually do, what are we going to do? Well, um, I think I have something here. Um, I brought props. So we always love props. That's good. Does anyone know what this is? So what are we going to do? Yes. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to break some ice today. We're going to break some ice. How are we going to do that? Yeah, well, how are we going to do that? These conferences are, of course, also for good content, you know, some good speakers and stuff, but it's also to get to know each other, right? Of course. It's about networking. It's about like, hey, maybe meeting people, some new people who you haven't met before. So, and that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to take some time for that right now, right at the beginning. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to meet new people, people which you haven't spoke to before. Um, and we're going to talk to those people, and you're going to share something about your passion, something what drives you, what, does, what, does you, what makes you come out of bed in the morning, you know? What, Outside of coffee, of course, in the outside, Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, you start with that. <laughs> and what drives you? Yeah, Jesus, we know that Jesus, yes, you know, like, yes. but what, what's more, what's behind that, you know? And we've got to take some time for that. And maybe after five or ten minutes, we're going to swap to another person. So you might need, uh, meet a new person. But really, share something what's more deep. And also, when you look to next year, what was ahead for you? You know, what's ahead for you in the coming year? And maybe what was a big thing in last year, you know? So we're going to really share, take some time to share. Uh, maybe there's some soft background music which we can put on. And then we're going to meet some new people. Yeah? And that's right now. So please all rise up, stand up. Yeah, and if you're in this room, the whole conference, feel free to move to the other side of the room. Feel free to and move up. And if you're up. on this side, you can move to the other side of the room. Yeah, go up, go down, whatsoever. We're going to take time for this, huh? Yes.
you can um, everyone can close up the conversations that they're having and find another friend make a new friend and meet someone new Right. We've got two minutes left, so maybe if you didn't pray for each other, that's a great idea, actually. I see some people praying for each other, so just do that. Pray for each other, pray a blessing out.
everyone if you can start finding your seats. Close off your prayers and Yes, it's awesome to chat. It's awesome to get to know more people. Especially if you're an extrovert like myself. Remember, we have more times to do this um, today and tomorrow and Thursday. So find a seed if you haven't found one. Yes. Yeah. All right, I see this couch. It's nice. Yes, yeah. yes. It's comfortable. It's great to have a couch here. So, oh. maybe for the ones um, who missed the introduction or were a little bit late this morning, my name is Stefan. I'm working at YM Heidebeek. My name is Hannah. I'm with YM Urban Key in London. Yes, and we are your MCs for today. Right. And what are we going to do now with this couch here, Hannah? Well, we could just stay here. I think this is a nice uh, place for conversation. You it know? is. It and is. Get to know people. Yeah. So maybe we should do that, actually. You think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. We should get All to right. know some people. You know, here's some stories, I think. Yeah, stories. Stories, stories are good. YM and stories is like a perfect match. Yeah, YM stories are pretty epic. Yeah. All right. So who's going to do that? Um, I think it's going to be Tove, Tove this morning, who's going to come up um, to start off our sofa session. I don't know if you've met Tove before. She's a lovely lady. She is the convener for um, YWAM Northern Europe, um, the convener for the University of the Nations, and um, she likes to teach a lot. This is something that she's really passionate about. And um, one of the things that um, maybe you don't know about Tove is that she has lit many outdoor fires around the world. So she's a fire starter. I, w I can say that, right? Yes? That's fine. So yes, and Tove will lead this next session for us. Thank you. A round of applause. That's true. I've made a lot of fires around the world. So if you see it smoking somewhere, I'm probably there. It's awesome being with you guys. Um, we have some special guests for the couch this morning, and I, I'd like to invite them up straight away. So, the Akimovs, give them a hand. <laughs> Many of you would know them. I guess maybe you had to pile the couches up like this. <laughs> is that how it is? No. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, they did that for Lauren yesterday, so I thought, figured that's how you go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> so we're going to have two uh, couch or sofa sessions during, uh, during our time together, and it's a, it's a time where we can not just connect with the past, because you're part of the present as well, and, and I believe you're part of the future too. Um, but we really want to be standing partly on the shoulders and hear some of the stories of how also how Europe were pioneered. If you don't, how is it again? I, I see a fountain down here. There's something about rooted in the past. How, how did it go again? Did you get that? One more time. Rooted in the past. Focus on the future, engaged in the present. That's a good quote. You can write that down. So, <clears throat> are you comfortable? I'm comfortable. Do you need to put another log on? Or it's good. <laughs> it's good. Um, just before we really get started here, there's a few rules. I guess we could say this week even. We are not talking about Brexit. It's all just a little bit too raw still. Um, but I know that you're partly American, even though I know you're born in China. And, um, and partly Ukrainian. It's all quite confusing. Oh, totally Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah. Totally Ukrainian. 
97%. Awesome. But uh, in return, I promise not to say anything about American politics and Trump or anything. We're not talking about that. And I'm from Denmark, so we're not talking about the Chinese flag and turning that into something else. Uh, we're not talking about that either. So, so now that's out of the way. Um, how long have you served with Vibram anyway? Well, actually, this, uh, this is our, our 50th year of getting married, but also full-time YWAM. But, but we both started... Uh, Good. We both started, actually, as teenagers. Uh, now, Lauren says it's 60 years, but that, he was a few years by himself, you know? And so, uh, really, the first big outreach, as you read in uh, Is That Really You, God, was uh, uh, 1964 in the Caribbean. So I was part of that. I was 17 years old then, and, and Carolyn, you were... Uh, I was first involved in 1966, and I think I was 16. <laughs> and uh, I went to Central America with Wedge and Shirley Alma. I don't know if you've seen the book, but she's written a book. It says it's titled "Is He's Your God Too?" So, yeah. Does that mean you haven't done a DTS, or have you done a DTS? Well, sure, I mean, but many. <laughs> we had uh, what was called an SOE, a School of Evangelism. So it was like uh, a DTS on steroids, you know, it just, uh, it was, uh, uh, yeah, the DTS came out of that, uh, but I mean, this was a 14-month program where it, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite the school. So, so yes, we, we did a DTS. Okay, okay. Is that good enough? <laughs> I haven't seen the register here, so I'm not sure. But before we go any further, I'd like to know, how many of you know of Al and Carolyn? Look at that. But I, 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 see, some, I see some missing hands as well. So um, I know that in Eastern Europe, you'll probably be called the, the, the parents of Eastern Europe or something like that. Grandparents. Yeah, I know, grandparents. I'm sorry. So you have some grandkids here in some ways. Um, so many of us, we, we stand on your shoulders, and, and some of us have heard some stories, uh, because you're quite famous around the world for storytelling. You know, some incredible stories, I know. Um, so how did it start? I mean, how did you end up in this part of the woods? Well, that's uh, a story uh, in itself. <laughs> yes, so um, just a short vision. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, of course, my parents uh, and grandparents started out in, in this part of the world, in Ukraine. And uh, during the uh, Stalin years after the revolution, um, a lot of my family was wiped out, was, uh, were killed, actually. Uh, and that included uh, uh, both sets of my grandparents. And, uh, of course, they had the famine. Uh, that wiped out a good part of Ukraine. It was, a, it was an awful time. And uh, so my mom uh, was basically left orphaned. She was adopted by uh, a couple that became my grandparents. And uh, it was a time of, of uh, also of revival in, in Ukraine. And uh, it, it, uh, uh, in the early 20s, there was a young man that uh, came from from Ukraine, went to America, immigrated, and uh, came into the Azusa Street Revivals. And uh, it was filled with the Holy Spirit, and God spoke to him and said, go back to your people. And so he returned to Ukraine and began to uh, tell them of this new experience of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And uh, it just began to spread through Ukraine. And my grandparents were among those who were affected by this. And, and uh, it was at that time the Lord spoke to them and said, uh, uh, things are going to get very, very terrible, and um, you uh, are going to leave, and I'm going to lead you if you follow me. And, uh, and he led them out to the Ural Mountains, and uh, they, uh, he actually became one of the first missionaries to go out from Ukraine, which Ukraine has been an incredible missionary sending field. 
And, uh, and so he was, uh, he was sent out to reach the Cossacks there and, and uh, um, began to reach this one village and, and the whole village came to know Jesus. He was imprisoned and uh, was released then. He came back to the village and God said, okay, now it's time for you to move on. And so he uh, began to pack up a few things and, and to, to get ready to leave. And the villagers said, well, where are you going? He said, uh, really, I don't know, but God said we're to leave. So the villagers said, well, if God told you to go, we're going with you. So the whole village packed up and they started on this journey that uh, took them 25 years to reach America, uh, crossing the mountains into China, where I was born, crossing all of China, going on to Japan, living in a refugee camp in the Philippines for some years, and, and then 25 years later, they arrived in San Francisco, home of the 49ers. <laughs> Sad, sadly, this... Uh... <laughs> yeah, one of those unmentionable topics. We won't talk, talk about it anymore. But anyway, so it was natural for me that uh, it was like uh, the man that uh, came to America originally, and uh, we... I kind of grew up in this Slavic community in San Francisco, and, and um, yeah, we, we grew up with everything Slavic, and our parents always talked about uh, that there was a reason why God brought us to America. And so they wanted us to keep the language, uh, keep faith. Unfortunately, for a little while, I left and uh, got into a lot of trouble. And uh, as Lauren puts it, he found me in jail one day. <laughs> wasn't quite like that, but uh, but, <laughs> but uh, not too far from, from the truth. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I ended up in jail with some friends of mine. And, uh, but it was in a jail that uh, I heard God speak to me for the first time and said, uh, is this really where you want to be, Alex? And I said, no. He said, um, um, and I, I, I cried out. I said, God, if you help me, I'm going to search for you with all my heart. And so I did. And uh, it was just a short time after that that I met Lauren and uh, ended up in the Caribbean. And uh, very shortly after that, ended up going back to Eastern Europe. Thank you. It, can I just ask, it, it, did you also, were you born in China too? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I was born in a town called Sevastopol, but it's in California. <laughs> so, um, but uh, my family background is uh, German and English, and uh, my German family went to the Crimea during the time when Catherine the Great had invited those from Europe to come to Europe, Russia. So um, there's a little bit of something there in my blood, I guess, that I've had some Slavic uh, uh, experience. So, and yeah, so I, uh, I went to that first one of uh, SOE in 1969, and uh, if you caught it last night, <laughs> Laura said that was his fail school, but then in 1970, he had the real one. <laughs> but he didn't fail, because there were some that came out of that school. <laughs> so <laughs> I would say so, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, give him a hand. Yes, please. <laughs> I was thinking of I never turn down coffee. Maybe that one for you as well. <laughs> and you have a choice. Well, this is kind of hard drinking coffee in front of you all. It's just uh, that's. Don't worry, we have the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this! Wow. That's good. Thank you. Just a little bit. Yeah. All right. Um, so this is not your first country check, right? Uh, no, it's not. No. Uh, about the first time. Yeah, well, um, when we came to Europe and finished our school, the SOE, one of our teachers uh, at that time was Brother Andrew. And uh, this was a time when, uh, of course, he was, uh, the, the book God Smuggler was uh, one of the top sellers at that time, so he was quite well known. But uh, he, uh, he invited us after the school to come and join his team 
And uh, so we did. We moved to Holland and, and uh, worked with him for several years. Lived actually in his home there with him. And it was, uh, it was quite a, a, an honor and a, and a blessing. So in a way, he kind of helped to give birth to YWAM in Eastern Europe in, in that way. But, uh, so our first years were spent uh, as Bible smugglers. So we smuggled Bibles all over Eastern Europe. And, and one of those trips, uh, one of our very first trips, was here to Czechoslovakia at the time, called Czechoslovakia. And, and so uh, we, we called a couple of our friends, uh, Joe and Judy Portali, who were at Lausanne base at the time, and said, do you want to join us? So they did. And, uh, but just before we left, uh, a man in uh, another part of Holland had called uh, the office there, and he said, uh, you know, I, I own a, a, a clothing store, and uh, I've got some beautiful uh, warm winter clothes, and somehow I feel like it's supposed to go to Eastern Europe. And he said, w would you be interested in, in, uh, uh, in, 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 yeah, taking these? And so we drove up there and picked up a couple of suitcases of this, uh, this, this, this warm winter beautiful clothes. And uh, we didn't understand it, but somehow we felt like with this man's uh, passion for this, you know, giving us this clothes and sending it to Eastern Europe, there had to be something behind it. So uh, we decided we'd take it with us on this trip. And so we had a, a full load of Bibles and uh, we ended up driving across the border uh, Christmas Eve. And uh, so we're driving and, and uh, came to the, uh, the eastern part of, of uh, Czechoslovakia. And it was a, a Moravian town, a Moravian uh, family that we were supposed to go to. So we came just as they're celebrating Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve. And uh, we were <laughs> kind of surprised, you know. I mean, normally you show up at someone's door at Christmas Eve, uh, it's not probably the, the best time to come. But, but these people were so thrilled that we were there. And uh, we came in, and, and uh, we, we told them what we brought them, and they were even more thrilled. So we quickly unloaded the car, uh, the, the Bibles, as well as the, the clothing. Uh, it, was a, it was a Moravian pastor, actually. And uh, then we celebrated what they called the love feast. And uh, they, they shared this uh, wafer around and told each other how much they loved each other. And that actually became... Uh, the reason why we call Love Feast, Love Feast in YWAM. It came from that, uh, that experience in, in Moravia. And uh, so um, we had a wonderful time then. Uh, we, we ministered all over the country. They took us everywhere. Uh, Christmas uh, Day, uh, we uh, spoke, ministered in six different churches. And uh, same thing on New Year's Day. And the problem was was that in each church, they waited for us to come and then had a feast afterwards. So that meant that we ministered six times that day, but also had six feasts. You know, and uh, I tell you, well, that explains why. <laughs> but, uh, it, yeah, it was an incredible time. We, we just made some wonderful friends and fell in love with the country. But it was actually a few years later that uh, we, we realized uh, the significance of that, uh, that night. Because we, we came back here, and uh, uh, one of the, the pastors here in Prague uh, said, you need to come and meet some people that are staying with us right now. And so we made our way quickly over to his house, and he introduced us to this young lady and uh, she said, I have a story to tell you. She said, uh, I come from, uh, from, from the Soviet Union. And uh, uh, it was Christmas, which was a little bit of a difference, a little later uh, Christmas that they have in, uh, there than, than we do. So it would have been a couple of weeks later. And uh, she said, um, my brother is an evangelist. His name is Joseph, Joseph Bondarenko, which uh, who's probably at that time was the most famous evangelist in, 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 uh, in Russia. Uh, in fact, he, he was such a, an evangelist that, uh, you know, you, you couldn't do 
uh, evangelistic crusades or anything like that. What they did is that when someone died um, or were getting married, uh, they would just invite all their friends. So that you could have a thousand people that would show up at someone's funeral and no, no one really knew the guy, you know, in some small village. But a thousand people would come because Joseph was preaching at it. And so these were their, their crusades. And uh, so she said, my, my brother uh, was arrested uh, on, uh, just before Christmas. And, uh, and they, they came, they took him away, but they really wanted to punish us. So they took everything we had. They took our furniture. They took our clothing. They just emptied the house completely and left us with nothing. And we began to cry out, God, have you forgotten us? You know, what, what's happening? And she said, you know, the next day, these two suitcases arrived with wonderful, warm winter clothing. She said, oh, God showed us that he loved us. And uh, she threw her arms around us and began to hug us and thank you, thank you, thank you for sending that clothes to us. She said, you don't know what that did for us. But, you know, we, we just, again, we saw so many things like that, you know, that uh, you just saw God's hand in, in all that you did as you obeyed him. Fantastic. I hope you're leaning in and just making notes of the principles here. You know, I want to just add one yeah. little thing. You know, it was really important for us to hear God. And that was one thing that was very emphasized in those early schools is how to hear God's voice. And I remember <laughs> one of these times I was praying about whether I should go on a certain trip. And you really needed to know. You know, you needed to know you're going to be in the right place <laughs> at the right time. And I was praying, and I was very sincere, and I just asked God, I said, Oh, Lord, if you want me to go on this trip, will you just call me by name? Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh, what did I pray? <laughs> Do I really believe I can hear his calling me and my name? I know it's not in the Bible. <laughs> well, you know, no sooner had I finished the prayer, I just opened the Bible, and there were the first words that popped out to me were, I am the Lord your God who calls you by name. <laughs> so, you know, I said, God, I take you at your word. And he says, and I take you at your word too. So he did answer my prayer, but I wasn't taunting him. I just accidentally said that, yes. But it was so important to hear God. And he always would teach us, tell us, show us how we should, what we should do and where we should go. So very important to hear God's voice. Amen. So I, I heard some of the early days as well. It was kind of, um, I've heard about this map and Lauren say to the group of people, okay, pray about where you should go. And, and people would go walk away and come back. And, and uh, I think it was with Lynn, okay, are you going to take England? And he prays about it. So, okay, I'll take England. Or was it the entire UK? I'm not quite sure, actually. You know, so, so was that a little bit like that as well? So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take all of Russia and, you know, the Balkans. Uh, uh, uh. Well, it's true, and you know, and, and uh, it was crazy times, you know, because we, I don't know, I guess because some of the teachers we had, you know, Tante Cory, Cory Ten Boom, and Brother Andrew, and, and, and a lot of others, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, the world was there for the taking, you know, and, and it was kind of like, you know, well, you know, what are you going to believe for? And uh, we probably were so dumb that we, do, we did believe that... Uh, you know, yeah, why not take, take, uh, take the whole thing, you know, and just, uh, so, you know, when we, um, and again, I look back at it now and I think, oh, how, how could that possibly be? But, but uh, we were, I was on, uh, on my heart, of course, was Eastern Europe and, and, and I was working towards that uh, already when we first arrived in, in, in Europe. But, uh, at that time, we were sent to Spain because uh, you had to learn a language as part of your lang language study as well. And so uh, we had to, we went, I went down to Spain. And uh, so I'm there thinking, well, God, I, I'm supposed to go to Eastern Europe. Why am I here in southern Spain where on a clear day I can look and see Africa? You know, it's about as far as you can get from Eastern Europe. And, and uh, 
I began to realize, you know, what God was doing, that, uh, that he, he wanted to do some training, and, and so, so we did. And so we took on Spain for, for the first couple of years, and, and, uh, and even that didn't seem like it was enough. Uh, one day somebody handed me a little note in one of the churches there, and, and uh, all it had was a, a name, um, Dr. Sinjin, uh, Tangier, Morocco. And uh, I, I brought this to our team. I said, I, I don't know what this means, but this guy handed it to me and he said, uh, here, pray about this. And so I, I said, we better pray about this. And, and uh, so we prayed and prayed that uh, we, two of us, should uh, go over and see this Dr. Sinjin. We uh, hitchhiked to Morocco, to Tangier, and uh, got there. And, and, and he says, oh, he says, thank you for coming. He says. Uh, he says, we've been praying for you to come. And he said, well, how, how'd you know who we were? Or, you know, I mean, why one was totally unknown at the time. And, and he says, well, he says, uh, here, come follow me. We went down to the basement, and here was this English fellow that had, a uh, uh, hippie that had fallen asleep on the beach, had o OD'd on drugs, and just was totally sunburned. I mean, really just his whole body was just burned. He says, uh, you know, I've got to do some, some rounds. He said, would you guys spend some time with him? And so we did, and, uh, and just prayed with him, had a, had a wonderful time with him. The doctor came back, he said, now here's my problem. He says, uh, I've been called here to work with the, uh, the Moroccans, and, uh, and we have all of these kids now, these, this hippie trail thing that's going on, and, and, uh, and, and they're coming with all these sicknesses and diseases and things, and, and we don't know what to do. He said, please, help us. Well, out of that uh, came the first ministry called the Hope House that uh, was established in Tangier as a ministry. And, and, and so and then also when we got back to Holland, which we were at that time already living in, um, Ronke uh, Fountain, sitting right there, was uh, uh, <laughs> there waiting for us because uh, we were at that time working on establishing YLM in Holland. And uh, so... Uh, we had these three things going on at the same time. All of Eastern Europe, uh, which included, of course, all of the Soviet Union, and somebody wanted to actually give me the whole of the communist world, which was everything, you know, and, and, uh, and we were dumb enough we probably would have taken it, you know, but, uh, but and then, you know, Spain and then Morocco, Africa, so it was, uh, we were pretty dumb. No comments on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> when we had dinner just a few weeks ago, by the way, these are hosts with the most, I can tell you that. Um, you, you, talk, or you told me a story about Kamchatka. How many of you play Risk? I have played Risk. So we know what Kamchatka is. Yeah. Right. Um, because sometimes I think right now, I, I hear some base leaders and even DTS leaders and say, we, we just want more students. And sometimes I want to ask them why, you know, for what, you know, DTS is of course never the end goal that it's not supposed to be, you know, and you told me this story about Kamchatka and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, um, can, the, the abbreviated version. <laughs> abbreviated version, yes. okay, well, um, Lauren mentioned Kamchatka several times last he night. He did. And if you don't know, Kamchatka's, uh, kind of a, a peninsula, a, a tail that hangs off of the Soviet Union of Russia and uh, between Alaska and Japan. And it's, uh, it's really, uh, in, in some ways, the middle of nowhere, but, but for years it was off limits to anybody in the world. In fact, this is where some years ago a Korean airliner flew over Kamchatka and the Russians just blew it out of the air. And uh, I don't know, you probably weren't alive at the time, but uh, some of you weren't. But it was, uh, it shocked the world, you know, but they basically, it was a message, stay away, because it was a big submarine port and missile base that was, uh, again, in a very strategic part of the world, and, and so no one was allowed there. But it was a place where you have uh, the indigenous people, the Kodiak people, and uh, so um, as, we were, uh, as the wall came down and Eastern Europe opened up, uh, we were suddenly faced with a deluge of people. It was like the, the picture that Lauren showed, the wave. This huge wave came towards Eastern Europe. And uh, at that time, 
we were processing probably over several thousand people a year that were going into Eastern Europe. King's Kids groups, DTSs, university groups, uh, church groups, even all the televangelists, including Brother, uh, Billy Graham was calling us, you know, could you help us uh, to get into the Soviet Union or uh, Russia at that time or Eastern Europe. And uh, so we were processing and helping these people and, and opening up ministries for them. And, but at that time, everyone was going to, to Kiev, to, to, uh, to St. Petersburg, to Moscow. And the Lord spoke to us and said, uh, the water is not getting out to where it needs to go. And uh, it's like this deluge was coming, the wall came down, but uh, the water was flooding these places. He said, dig ditches. And so we took that as a, as a word for us to get that water out to all these other places, to the Arctic regions, to the Caucasus, to the Far East. And so we began to dig ditches. And Kamchatka was one of those. And Lauren mentioned uh, this French girl that was there. And she was in a very remote part of one of the cities in, uh, in, in Kamchatka. But the two guys that really started the work there, and uh, Nikolai, uh, Polyakov is here. Nikolai, just wave your hand, or, or there is Nikolai back there. And uh, Nikolai and, uh, and, and Anatoly were two Ukrainian young guys that uh, God led to Kamchatka. They went there, and uh, they had a, a dual purpose. And Nikolai was the YWAMer, and Anatoly was the pastor. And uh, so they both uh, worked on planting a church and planting a YWAM base. And uh, what happened was that the, the two began to, to really uh, work off of each other. And so uh, within a very short time, they planted 23 churches in Kamchatka. And uh, all the, the pastors and, and the new members were mostly DTS graduates. So they'd all gone to DTS and, and uh, been trained. And then we started other schools there. Uh, counseling schools, SBS, all the other YWAM schools. He started those, and all these pastors would come back and do these schools, and then they go back again. And so this was going on, and every year they'd bring it back to a conference where they'd continue to feed them. And, and as a result of this, the church just kept growing and growing, and, and uh, including the, the one, uh, the main church there in, in Petropavlovsk, which grew to over a thousand people there. And so, uh, yeah, it was such a, a wonderful thing. And you go to that church today, and you see them pray over the offering. And uh, the testimonies that they have, you know, what did the Lord speak to you? Well, he told me this. What did the Lord and, and this is how they take offerings in that church, you know. And they send out uh, people, to teams, and the church sponsors them. They have businesses all over the city, all over the, the, the area now, and some of the uh, the key businessmen are, are people that have grown up in that church and, and trained by YWAM. And it, to me, it was a real story of what Lauren was talking about, of affecting all the spheres. And you see it in Kachatka. It's, it's amazing. One of the guys that owns one of the main uh, shopping malls there. Uh, he's just recently become one of the pastors of the church there. And so it's just a, it's this beautiful blending of YWAM and the church together. And, and uh, so, yeah, God did some wonderful things. And, and uh, you need to talk to Nikolai here and meet him. And, and, and by the way, there's, there's several, uh, you know, we're not the only old guys here. There's a, a bunch more here. And there's, but there's, uh, uh, back there is Jim Dickey. And uh, Jim uh, pioneered the first DTSs in uh, Russia. He, uh, he pioneered the first DTS in Latvia. And uh, incredible what these guys have done. And as well as John Hess. Where's John here someplace? John uh, back there? Where? There he is, yeah. He's uh, pioneered the work in Poland. And so these are some of our old, uh, old guy friends here. And, and, and they have a lot to give you. They have as many stories as I do. And uh, I encourage you to invite them to your base. Uh, they're, they're freer now. They can come and, and teach at your DTSs. So have them come and, uh, and share. Thank you. Um, now to closing here, I just want to hear um, Adam. No. 
Viram is now 60 years old and times change. And we understand we hear some awesome stories there. But do you have any advice to us now in Europe? Not to, yeah, 2020. You know, uh, apart from uh, praying and hearing the word of God uh, and obeying it, uh, I get that's a call. But do, do you have any other advice from your experience? We're all taking notes. <laughs> well, it has to be the first thing you said there, because it's, uh, uh, yeah, it, it is hearing the voice of God still, you know. I mean, along the way, each time, uh, God did something for us. Let me just give you one example. In, in, in Poland, we started working with young people doing uh, underground camps for, for youth up in the Tatra Mountains and all that. And uh, we had a really great ministry with uh, most of the evangelical churches there. And, and, uh, and the Lord said, give that ministry away. And, and we did. And, uh, and he had something far greater, bigger for us at that time. And all of a sudden, our camps went from just a, a, you know, a handful of young people to thousands. And because he led us into the whole Catholic movement there, the renewal movement. Father Blagnitsky, the leader of it, had been praying, saying, God, send these people to us. And, and, uh, and, and so, yeah, it was amazing. But that kept happening over and over and over again. And every, you know, every fresh move that God wanted us to be involved in, he prepared us for. And so oftentimes, there was a sacrifice of leaving behind what we, what we started or what we were doing and, and, and moving in a... a really by faith into a whole new thing. And he kept doing that over and over again to us, you know, and, and it wasn't easy. Sometimes, you know, we, we had to start totally from scratch, completely everything, and, and uh, leave behind what we'd built up for, for years. And, and, and I, I would say, let's be open to what he has now for us, because we're about to experience some new things. And uh, I know in, in, in the U.S. right now, uh, we're expecting another uh, Jesus movement, another Jesus revival. And it's, it's, you could feel it. It's on the verge of it, you know. And so many things are, are coming together. And, and I think Europe's probably even more ahead of the U.S. with that. And so we're on the verge of some things. But be open to what God has for you in that. And if it means, you know, uh, laying down some things and some old things that you had and doing some things in some new ways and be open to what he has for you. Because yeah, really there are some, uh, we found in Eastern Europe, you know, people constantly told us, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't evangelize, you can't, you know, you shouldn't even go there. You know, that was the first thing that my denomination told me. We don't send missionaries to Eastern Europe. Are you willing to go to South America? You know, and, and, and that was the, the attitude, you know, just you can't do that. And, and God made a way for us to do amazing creative things. Mm. Amazing creative things. I wish I had time to tell you some of the things. But, but uh, I think those same creative things are, are out there for us today. In, in reaching young people, in, in, in uh, spreading the gospel. It doesn't have to be in the old days. And particularly, um, it's not just going to a place and starting a DTS. A DTS should be something that it was like what we had when Lauren started the, the, the school. We came to evangelize. It was a school of evangelism. We went out and did evangelism. And we would come back from our evangelistic trips with twice as many members on our team. Because they just joined us. There's no place for them to go. So they just came back with us, you know, and, and, and just signed up for the next school. Well, that's where the need for the DTS came out of then. We had to split it then to disciple these new converts. And so let's go back to that, you know, to the place of, of, of getting out and evangelizing so that we need DTSs, you know, and, and then they'll be full, you know, and, and uh, we, we will have that, that market for the DTS that you need, you know. But don't just go out and start DTSs uh, just for starting DTSs. And, and don't just do things just because that's the way it's been done. Let's look to God for new things. Way and, to uh, go. Way to go. Things.
I know you have so many more stories, um, and that you are writing a book. <laughs> yeah, they've been writing a book for a while. Yeah. So I think we need to give a push, um, and I wonder if we could just all pray at one time for, um, for this book to actually be fully written and printed, and I think it'll probably go be an encyclopedia or something like that. There'll be a number of books. But can we do that? We need those books, yeah? So just a couple of minutes, yeah? You can stand up too if you want. And then we're, after that, we're just gonna finish with a, a short movie, yeah? Yes, Lord, we need this book, and we ask that you would, um, you would come alongside as this main inspirator and instigator, uh, Holy Spirit, that you would be bobbing around them um, with inspiration and help to convey what, uh, what you have given them, Lord, so we too can, can run with it. Uh, we are not passing on patterns, we have learned, but we are passing on fires. We pray this book will be a fire, and it will start fires all over the place, Lord. We ask for that in your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Um, Lauren sort of... Thank you. Lauren sort of quoted them yesterday because he talked about we pass on fires and uh, it's not a pattern. We can, pa we can pass on a role and we should by all means, we shouldn't just be sitting on the roles, you know, um, for the sake of it. But if you pass on a torch, that's the image. And some of you have seen this short um, video or movie here, um, but let's just, uh, let's start some fires. Some might ask, when will you... Some might ask, when will you older YWAMers pass the baton on to the younger generation? In YWAM, we don't use batons. Our symbol has always been a young person with a torch. When we catch the fire, the passion for going into all the world with the gospel, our torch is lit and we hold on to it with everything we have. My torch? You'll have to pry it from my cold, dead hand. Our task is to pass the fire on to others, that they will run with us, expanding those waves to every continent. Our desire is to see the younger generations do much more than we ever did, and to go further with more creativity and anointing, to do it better and bigger than we did. Together, we create more fire, and together, we take it around the world. Go, win the world, run, outrun us. But you need to catch us first, because we won't stop. Amen. Lord, I just pray for this whole group here, but especially this younger generation. Thank you, Lord, for what you did uh, amongst us. You, you, you brought us wonderful teachers. You led this man, young man named Lauren Cunningham, gave him a dream, a vision. And we thank you for all of that, Lord. But we ask you for much more. 
And we just pray that everything that we had, the anointing you've given us, the miracles, all of that, Lord, will be multiplied to this next generation. Lord, may they take that torch and, and, and run with it, Lord. May they light many, many more torches. We pray for torches to be lit across this world, Lord. And we pray for the older ones as well, that they won't give up their torches, that uh, they'll keep burning, and, and they'll keep passing it on to, to others, that fire uh, to others, Lord, and, and around the world, Lord, until we see the fulfillment of those waves covering every continent. We ask you for that, Lord. Do it, Lord. Bless this generation, Lord. Bless these young people. Anoint them. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name. Just again, offer our hearts to the Lord. Jesus, it's only because of you. Well, let's just start. Let's, let's just allow our hearts to start to respond. Jesus, only because of you. Only because of you. Holy Spirit, would you open up our hearts? Open up our hearts, God. Would we not be after the story? Would we not be after schools? Would we not be after organization? We want your heart, Jesus. We want your heart, Jesus. I feel there's a response in the room. Let's release it. Let's not keep it in our, to ourselves. It's, the response is for us as a family. Holy Spirit, we desire more of you. desperate for you.
the King of kings, let every tongue confess that he is Lord. Lift up, let us join with all the heavens sing. Surround me, let him break at your name. Still call the seas to still, raging me to still in every way at your
I know that there is no one like you, Lord, and you, you Lord, Lord, you stand alone. Come into your presence, knowing you are good, knowing you are perfect, knowing that you are faithful, that you are strong, rich in mercy, knowing the kindness of your heart, the goodness of who you are. Father, we know how it's transformed our lives, transformed our hearts. And we just cry to you, Jesus. Thank you that you are more than enough. You are more than enough, Jesus. You freely give it to us, Jesus.
just one look of your face and we changed our mind
Oh no, it was off. I said again, for those who didn't listen, we would like to hear from the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 If you got a word, if you got a picture, even if it is a tongues, it's fine. If you're speaking tongues, it's okay. Say it in your own language. We would like to hear from God. This is there's room for that. Okay? That way? Okay, I need to go the other way. Because of the camera. It was not a word during the worship, but I just felt what Al said, the very last sentences when he shared. I really felt it was a word as is why one. What he said when it comes to DTSs that we must not be occupied with going out and just running DTSs, but we need to go out in evangelism first and reach them in. And I, I really think the Lord is calling us, you know, to go out on the streets in evangelism in a new way. I just feel it is a, a word for us, to us as a mission right now. Amen. Amen. This is what it is about, right? It's about evangelizing. Amen. Hello, my name is Jan. Uh, I just have a strong sense from, I was very encouraged about what Lauren said about, so to say, new beginnings, that God is doing, I think, all over the world. And I, I just have a sense there's a train coming in to, to, to us in Europe, and we can join that train. Do we want to grow? I didn't really think God wants us to grow, but we have to be open for that and say we want growth. And I think there are many exciting. There's a new season ahead of us. And I just have a sense we, 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 Europe is so humanistic. So we must put God in the center. That's, that's the only way we can keep our values. Because the humanism will teach us that you, I'm in the center of my needs. Then you'll soon end up in a job. But we are to be a prophetic alternative that walks with God. And growth will come. And, and I just want to urge you to open up to fathom that growth. It's all over. There's no hard places because God is there and God is there. Can I do a little rap? I will do a little rap for you. I'll rap a day. Hey, hey, I sense the smell of rain. I can see a train coming in. And it's an invitation to every nation in Europe, to every generation, join in. It's an adventure of what God wants to do, and it's really true. This is the day to say, I want to join. I want to go on that train. And rain will come, rain of reformation, rain of restoration. Rain is coming. I sense revival. Come on, let's go together. We are family, and God gives liberty. He say, no, no, go on. Don't say, I'm weak. Don't say, I'm poor because God is strong and the time is now it's time to go 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 amen praise God I mean this train is a train that we cannot miss I think this is a train that's coming now and when you see a train full I don't know in some countries at least in South America and other countries you just go through the windows or whatever just go because you don't want to miss that train and I think we are in that kind of stage that we cannot miss this train. By the way, I'm Jose. I'm from Y1 London, Irvine Key. Uh, God bless you. <laughs> Come on. Hi, I'm Johnny from Amsterdam. Um, I, um, I have three daughters. And my oldest and my youngest are very energetic, outgoing people. But my middle one, there's something with her. And we don't know what it is. And we're talking to psychologists and stuff. But she... She implodes. She, she, you know, when there's too much pressure, she doesn't open up. But it's difficult to reach her, and it, it takes a lot of love, and it takes a lot of patience, and it takes a lot of tears from me and my wife. And my wife texted me this morning. It wasn't going so well. She stayed. Uh, my my daughter stayed at home. Her name is Anna Sophia. And I, during worship, I had this word for her. Uh, I felt like God was speaking to my heart, and I and I texted her, uh, texted to my wife. But then when uh, Jose was invite people to share a word. I, I didn't think about that, but uh, suddenly I felt very strong that this word is also for all the nations in Europe where there's one wire or there's a few or where it feels like the ground is so hard. And like I have several friends here in Central and Eastern Europe and we often talk about like in Amsterdam there's more than 80 staff, there's stuff going on or in this place, in this place. Why, why 
Why do you have these bases where there's lots of things going on and there's other places where there's not a lot going on? Or, or there's, there's nations and there's people, groups, where it feels like the ground is so hard and you have to first plow it before you can do anything. Uh, and then I felt this word for my daughter as well as for this place. So maybe this is for you. Um, God said, give her space because a river runs deep. I know her in the deepest streams. As gold and diamonds are hidden deep within the mountain, her precious jewels are not easy to uncover. But judge not the ground for what you see on the outside, but because its treasures are below. Trust me, because I know what I'm doing. Trust me, because I am her father. Do not break her open force. Over time, your love and tears will soak the surface, and she will open at her time, just as a flower knows when it should bloom. It comes from within. I don't know if anybody is, feels that, recognize this. You feel that you're in an area that feels barren, it feels cold, it feels hard. Just it, raise your hand. Let me, let me just pray. Pray for you. And Lord, Lord, we just, we just pray for your showers of grace and mercy. Lord, and just give us patience. Give us patience to, to know what is your timing, Lord. And I pray for all my brothers and sisters in areas where it feels something is not opening up, something is not happening, and it's so difficult, and it takes so much patience, and it takes so much time, and it takes, it takes so much, Lord. I just pray that you give all these people energy from within. Lord, they, that they will, they will have the patience to wait for, for, the, for the time to be ready for these nations also to open up, for the people to, to open up. I pray that their love and their tears will do the work, Lord. And it's not by force, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, just quickly, I, I feel God's heart for wanting to connect our generations. And there's so much division right now with boomers and millennials and all of those terms being thrown around. But we need each other. And as a young person, I want to say we need you guys. We need to learn from you. And we need to learn that it's not all about us. Because that's a really big thing right now about my identity and my truth and my thing. And it's not about us. It's about Jesus. And we need to hear your testimonies and hear you guys say, we didn't do it. God did. It wasn't our breakthrough. It was God's breakthrough. And we just said yes to him. So keep sharing your stories. Keep fighting for the young people. Keep connecting and praying and meeting together and loving on each other. It's so important for us to carry the torches to the next generation. For us to learn what it looks like to release a coming generation, we need to see it from you guys. Thank you. Good. It's amazing. Thank you. Hi. So um, before I came, uh, we were in intercession, and I was praying for this time. And the Lord gave me a picture, and I really think that I should share it. Um, so it was actually a memory from a childhood movie. And this movie is about two best friends. And they meet a stranger, and the stranger is a child, and they're lost. And this lost child is actually royalty, and they're a, a princess. And they're trying to, they want to help the child get back to their castle. And um, during this whole thing, um, there's this part in the movie that the Lord reminded me of. And to get, there was a, to, get to the castle, there was a, a bridge, and this bridge you could not see. And it was a rainbow bridge. It's a childhood movie. <laughs> so this rainbow bridge got, took you straight to this diamond castle. And, um, but they had to ask a really hard question to make the bridge appear. And this image came to my um, mind when we were praying. And I, was, I feel like the Lord's challenge for us is that what question is he asking you to, because that, you know, rainbows represent the promise that he has for us, the promise to get to the kingdom. So um, it was just this beautiful picture of what question is the Lord asking you to make that promise appear to take you? Uh, yeah, and so that's what I just wanted to bless you guys with. And yeah, Lord Jesus, I just give that to you. I'm Henning, south of France. I have more, um, I think, for Madam Europe. From this place, you will be lifted higher and you will get new vision. And you're gonna do different things from now on. And things are gonna shift like in circles in a new way. England, now you're being released and big part of staff 
will just be thrusted forward in the continent. And it will go down, cross this continent into the so southern eastern Europe. Norway, the line is roaring. The roar is coming and is rising up in inside you and there's a new boldness coming. And you will pour out your workers in this continent. Ukraine, the harvest is ready. You will go north and south. You're going to be stronghold in that part of Europe. And the sowers and the reapers will go together. So prepare yourself to get the new tools for this new season. Romania and Greece. I put my angels in these places at this time. And I want you guys to participate, to be watchmen on the walls in these places of Europe. Because what is coming in and what is going out will bring the destiny of Europe. Spain, the, the rain is coming. The rain is coming and you're going to get green. You're going to get green in the spirit because there's so much rain coming. And what you've been praying for so long is now being released. And in this whole continent, there's so much shift going on. And people will go from place to place. And I'm building up a network that is not what you've seen so far. The unity in Europe it's not depending on the politics. It is depending on my body, says the Lord. And I want you to be pioneers. I want you to be, be prophetic in creating these new networks. You have all that is needed for it. And I'm going to show you again and fresh as you come up higher. I will release these visions to you. Amen. This is amazing, isn't it? This is just uh, the beginning. I really have a lot of expectations about all the words and everything that God we will be doing during this week. So this is just the beginning. A few more words. Yes. I got a picture of a tiny plant, and it's connected with the train, I think, and also with the, the hard ground. And I saw, like, the tiny plant, and it had a lot of buds, and it started to multiply and to grow bigger. And I think that is God's hard cry for, for us in Europe to yeah to grow and it will come and the new season will come my <coughs> my wife she planted a little church uh, in a fresh expression church and then she started praying for for growth uh, in that church which is a pretty liberal not so alive church uh, except that her little plant and for seven years, uh, they were praying, and I, I sometimes get engaged, but it's only two or three people. And we're like, come on, like, <laughs> what are we doing? And we're praying, um, and she kept it going all, all these years. And last, last week, we were uh, going to a Catholic church in that city, and all of a sudden, we see that the, the pastor, there's a new pastor, and he gathers about 300 people for a worship service Sunday night all of a sudden. We're like, whoa, what's going on? He's running the fifth Alpha course in a row. Whoa, our schools are still not full, but there's something going on. Yeah? We're seeing so many people turn to Christ amongst the refugees, uh, the Iranians, the, the Syrians, the Afghans. It's amazing. And we should be part of it. <laughs> And, and maybe that growth and what God is doing is a bit different than we expected. But let's not miss it. Um, sometimes we need to remember that it's uh, not God participating in, in, in our plans, but it's we are participating in what he is doing. Um, I think that's a major shift, isn't it, in thinking. So if God is bringing a lot of refugees to us, then it's like, okay, Lord, that's what we will participate in. So where are you going to take that? Well, I had a word just as we were also listening to, to the Akimovs, and there was, um, they seemed to be fairly confident in that God said so, and we did this. We acted on it. Um, even though Caroline also said, yeah, I, I had that sense that, that God, he's going to call my name. And I thought, oh, was that God anyway, you know? So a hesitation. I just had a sense that some of us in here, um, 
maybe standing still a little bit because of a hesitation of, can I hear God? Or I haven't heard God for a while really clear. And just like, like an, um, an insecurity in that. Are you with me? So if that is you, um, and there's no shame in that, you know, but if that is you, that you feel you're a bit stuck in that, I'm just not sure, and I'm not really hearing God clear these days, would you mind just raising your hand? And then people around you can pray with you and for you. Because we believe this, this week as well is that it's a week where there will be an opening up also of the prophetic and of hearing God clearer. And we live, as we heard, in a very humanistic you know, society that this is so counter anything that it's really, it's so easy that it rubs off, off on us. Yeah? So if that's you, you know, just put up a paw. <laughs> and then uh, and those around you, you just make notice and you just pray. Yeah? Can we do that? Right? So no shame, just like, yeah, I'm in that season right now. Because we want to see everyone being able to stand boldly and just move forward. Yeah? I'll, I'll, I'll just keep it. before you and I Hola 
We want to thank God for your words, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, that you are a speaking God. Lord, thank you that you are a true and faithful God. Lord, you're, you're not dead. You're alive, Lord, and you're right in the midst of us. Lord, you're speaking to us. We want to thank you, God, that you are a speaking God. Lord, that we can hear you. Lord, that we can obey you. Lord, thank you for who you are. And thank you, Lord, that we also need each other. Lord, that the young need the old, the old need the young. Lord, thank you for each other that you gave, gave us to each other. Yes. Thank you for who you are, the true and faithful God. Yes. And thank you that there's hope for Europe. And Lord, that you give new plans and new dreams for Europe. Yes. Amen. 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 Good. God is good, right? Amen. Yes. God is good. All the time, yes. And all the time. Exactly. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Caleb and team. Let's give them a hand, shall we? Yes. We are going to go into our coffee break because it's already a little later. So please go for it. There's coffee. Be back here at 11.30 sharp. Then we start. Yes? Go for it. With many tribes and tongues, but one united voice, we join together to tell honest stories of hope and unveil God's endless love.
Yeah.